welcome everybody. Uh, this is Discover Year. This is a structured and purposeful gap year program. My name is Jay. I'm the founder of the program. We founded it in 2015 with our first year, 2016-17, quite a while ago. And um, this evening, what we're hoping to do is give you a sense of our community, the content of the program, kind of how we do things. But most, most importantly, we want to help you understand uh, the culture that we have at Discover Year. So we, we've brought along a number of our awesome students, graduates, some parents of our students, and uh, they'll be able to share some some interesting and meaningful stories with you. So we'll start by just having our uh, our team here introduce themselves. And Jules, if if you'd like, feel free to kick it off. Cool. Thank you, Jay. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm excited to share a little bit about what Discover Year is with you. Um, I'm Jules, joining you from Ottawa, and I've been with Discover Year since 2018. So going on five, almost six years. Um, fun fact about myself is that it's hard to believe that I'm approaching the one year mark of when I got back from a sabbatical where my wife and I traveled several countries and traveled the world and uh, I'm itching to get back out there, but, uh, yeah, we shall see. I'll pass it on to M. Nice. Thanks, Jules. I'm always so jealous when you start talking about your trip. Uh, good evening, everyone. Really happy to have you here. My name is Emily. I am the manager of communications at Discovery Year. I'm also the program manager for the Toronto students. So those of you uh, in, in and around the GTA, I look forward to getting to know you. I have been with Discovery Year for over six years. It might be over seven years now in various different roles. Um, a fun fact about me is that I also took a gap year when I was 17. It was terrifying at the time, but it ended up being the absolute best decision I could have made at the time. I lived in Italy and traveled around uh, all of Europe for 10 months. So it was fantastic. I think the fact that you're all here considering a gap year is, uh, it takes a lot of courage and it's really exciting. So I'm looking forward to tonight and looking forward to getting to know all of you. Um, I'll pass it over to Arielle. Thanks, Em. I am Arielle. I was a graduate or I was a student in Discovery Year for the 2019 to 2020 year. So it's been over three years since I graduated the program and I'm now in Ottawa, used to be in the GTA, um, studying communication and computer science. Uh, and recently I, I've also been re-exploring my love for um, books and theater. So that kind of creative as well uh, is something that I'm excited about. And currently I'm also working with Discovery Year as an ambassador. I'm the social event coordinator for the students here in Ottawa and uh, also a facilitator for, uh, for the program. So I've been really just loving being part of this community in many different capacities over the years. Um, and I'll hand it over to Reed. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Reed. Um, I, oh, sorry about that. I graduated from the program in 2021 uh, and I'm now a Discovery Year ambassador. I love meeting new people and spreading positivity everywhere I go. And I also love the outdoors. Um, I look forward to sharing a little bit more about my experience and where I've gone from since Discovery Year with you all tonight. I will pass it off to Ariane. Hello. Um... My name is Ariane. I am from Ottawa, but I'm currently studying at Queen's University in computer science with a specialization in artificial intelligence. Um, I did discover a year in 2021 and 2022, and honestly would not be where I am today without it. So I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Very excited to share my experience. Uh, I will pass it on to Rachel. Hello, my name is Rochelle Rachel. I graduated last year, so 2023 in June. Um, I'm originally from Carlton Place. I saw a couple people that came from Carlton Place and got really excited. <laughs> but currently, I'm in Moncton, New Brunswick. So it's an hour ahead right now. It's 8.10 for me. Um, but I'm excited to share more. I'm currently taking um, primary education. And I can't say that I wouldn't be here without DUI in my year, um, with Discovery Year. Um, so I'm excited to uh, say more about my stuff or about myself and my experience with you. 
I will hand it over to Sarah. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah. I am uh, on this call from Ottawa. Uh, always been from Ottawa, and I am still in Ottawa, but I'm happy to be here, unlike a lot of people. Um, unfortunately. But <laughs> so yeah, I graduated on the same year as Rochelle uh, in 2023, just this past June. And I'm currently studying at the University of Ottawa. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to be able to talk to you guys, share a little bit of my, my, my experience, get to know where you guys are at, what's brought you to the info session tonight. And I'm not sure... Uh, I think I'll, I'll pass it on to Keisha. So yeah, hi, I'm Keisha. Um, I'm also from Ottawa um, and I'm currently a student at Discovery Year. So I'm about halfway through the program now. Um, and I would say I'm pretty passionate about art, which makes me pretty excited for next week's uh, experiential outing, which I hear is at the art gallery. So. Yeah, and I'm excited to talk to you about how my year's gone so far. Is there anybody else to pass on to since I had to refresh my computer at some point? <laughs> yeah, how about Mikey? Okay. Mikey. Hi there. I'm uh, Mikey Pazak. I'm a Discover Your Parent. I had two boys go through the program last year and uh, just excited to share my experience as a parent. And then I was also part of the uh, parent program as well. And uh, there was a lot of learning for myself through that as well. Thanks, Mikey. And last but certainly not least, uh, Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie. Um, I currently have a teenager who is, I think, one of the youngest in the program this year going through. Um, having a wonderful time and just about to embark on their travel term. And that's getting very, very exciting. So I'm happy to answer questions and share my experiences. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Okay, yeah, thanks. I think there was a couple of people who just joined while we were mid, uh, mid introductions here. So thanks for joining. Again, my name is Jay. I'm the founder of Discovery Year and uh, currently still the program director as well. And the reason that we founded Discover Year in 2016 was because at the time I had been uh, working at the University of Ottawa for, for almost uh, five years, six years at that point. And I had met 12,000 students across Canada. And my experience was really heartbreaking for me because I met a ton of young people with all kinds of potential and who I thought should be excited about moving beyond high school. And the overwhelming majority of the people that I met um, doing kind of promotions for the University of Ottawa, they were depressed and anxious and stressed and overwhelmed and unhappy. Um, and it wasn't like a 51% margin. It was the overwhelming majority. And it was students who couldn't articulate to me what they were interested in, what they wanted to do later. They were pretty apt to be able to rhyme off a double PhD program that they thought they had to do to be successful in life. But very few students that I interacted with seemed genuinely excited about the next step of their lives. The way it felt uh, for my age group when <laughs> back way back in the day when we were leaving high school, it felt quite different to me. Um, so it became pretty clear having also interviewed 500 employers, managers and business owners uh, when I was working at the co-op office at UOttawa um, after that, having interviewed about 500 of those employers and learning what they were looking for in young people coming into their teams and their, in their companies, it became clear that there was an opportunity to offer students the ability to learn a lot more about themselves, understand their interests and their skills and their strengths, and simultaneously learn the skills that employers are really looking for in young people coming into the workforce. So that's what Discover Year is. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the details tonight about, um, about how we help students, number one, better understand who they are and what they want in the world. And number two, build the skills to go out and achieve those things more effectively. So our goal in two hours, again, is to give you a kind of the broad strokes of the programs. If you, if, if you have detailed questions or particular elements of the program that you'd like to know about, don't hesitate to ask. We may push some of the questions till the end or later in the presentation because they might be coming, but feel free to ask your questions either here in the large group or in the, the breakout rooms at any time. 
So we'll go from this room to the breakout rooms where you'll hear a lot more from the students and parents and we'll kind of do a to and fro from the main room to the, uh, the breakout room so you have a chance to listen and hear and engage and share. Okay, with that, I'll just share a few slides and then we will do our first breakout session there in a few minutes. So as we mentioned, Discover Year is a structured and purposeful gap year program. And one thing that we've realized in our team recently is that um, we've been doing a poor job of highlighting the fact that not only is Discover Year a structured and purposeful gap year, it's actually a double certificate um, by way of, uh, we're a recognized uh, private career college by the government of Canada. So we're a recognized post-secondary institution. And our students who complete the program do receive a, a certificate in career and leadership development. So it's a gap year, but it is a little bit more uh, formal and of course structured <clears throat> than a lot of people would experience on a more typical gap year, if you will. So tonight what we're gonna do, we'll talk a little bit about the broad strokes of the program. We will talk a good amount about the culture, the environment that our students experience and that they contribute to at the program because that's something that's incredibly important to us and to learning. Uh, of course. And then we'll talk, of course, about some of the logistics about the program, about timing um, and that kind of thing. And then we'll we'll have questions and answers throughout. And of course, there might be some at the end as well. So in the broadest sense possible, what is Discover Year? It's a structured and purposeful gap year program. It's one year. It's uh, people sometimes prefer the term life skills, but it's career, it's life, it's leadership skills. Um, the way a lot of our students frame it is it's a lot of the things that they wish they had learned in high school that they didn't because they didn't have time or because those weren't the focus in, in the kind of academic setting. So a lot of our students will also say it's it's education outside of school, which is one way I've heard it um, defined by some students, which I really like. So it's a lot about learning, but it's quite different than most uh, most people experience in the typical kind of um, high school, certainly uh, and even post-secondary environment. So our goal is to help students better understand who they are and build the skills to go out and make use of who they are in the world to give back. So why might you consider a discovery year? So people often ask us the question, you know, who's this program made for? What is the profile of the typical student? You know, who are you trying to attract? And it's a difficult question to answer because we have a very diverse group of students, many of whom do the program for different reasons. And uh, even though that's true, they all get a lot out of the program. Uh, some things are similar that people get out of the program and some things are quite different depending on uh, the individual's goals in the program. So here's just a few reasons, some of our students and some of the reasons why you might consider a discovery year. But the truth is that there are a lot of reasons why people would uh, be drawn to discovery year or do well in it. Uh, it is a very diverse group. The one thing that's really important is that students want to take intentional time away from formal education, and they want to engage in a community that's going to help them learn about themselves and the world around them. <clears throat> so this just gives you a snapshot. This year we have 30 students in the program. This is where they come from. Um, and we actually just had a, in, a, in a very exciting step yesterday, our student from Mexico just moved to Ottawa to spend the second half of the year here, which is exciting for us. We tend to have one to three international students per year, but uh, 30 is, has been our typical cohort, 30, 30 students. So we aim between 30 and 40 students per year, uh, usually drawing mostly from Ontario and a little bit from Western Quebec, and then sometimes other parts of Canada and the US. So we aim to, and we are successful in achieving four broad outcomes with our students. Uh, the things that we really wanna help our students achieve in this year is number one, self-awareness. So we do a lot of work with the students to help them better understand what they're interested in, what they're good at, perhaps what they're not as naturally good at, what skills they've developed, what do they care about in the world, what are their values, and we really help them think about who they are in the context of society. And we want them to be able to build the confidence to be able to make use of that information that they learn. And the one thing that almost everybody who leaves the program, one of the first words they say upon reflection of what they gained in the year is confidence. So that's a really big booster. Uh, the students who come in leave feeling much more confident just about who they are and the way they can move forward in the world. 
the third main thing that uh, our students, the, the actual skill I would say that we focus the most attention on is communication skills, mostly related to job or career skills and then interpersonal communication. And our students uh, vastly improve, you know, their ability to communicate in different contexts by the time they leave the program. Um, they're ready to communicate much more like adults when they leave. And then resilience. So our students really come to understand that in truth, nobody has it all figured out when they're 18 or 19 years old. Uh, life is a journey and everybody keeps failing. And the goal is to fail more intelligently as you grow up and keep learning and keep implementing the things that you learn about, uh, about yourself. So the students interact with all kinds of really interesting mentors and they hear how those people messed up and how they recovered. So our students leave with a, a much better understanding and uh, much more comfort about the uncertainty that life is. I'm Aurelia. I'm Ian Cliverton. My name is Sophia. My name is Isaac, and um, I'm a high school graduate taking a gap year course this year called Discover Year. There's a lot of pressure on kids these days. He wasn't ready. He didn't know what he wanted to do. You know, it's this life-changing decision that you have to make. So I had a preconceived notion of, you know, a gap year and structure. We went into it with, with no expectations. We see only good things that have happened. I didn't expect us to be able to apply everything we learned either immediately or the next day. So we learn empathy, we learn communication skills, relationships, um, and taxes, and these things were never touched in high school. I feel like I've grown much more. I kind of put myself out there. I met lots of people. I was not just told on what I need to improve, but taught how to improve what I needed to improve. It just gave her space to sort of explore her, who am I? You know, where am I going? Who do I want to be? I definitely learned much more about how to meet people, um, just, yeah, put myself out there, be more confident. Like how much these skills can be developed. So we learn all these things that I didn't even realize were thing, uh, like people could study and work on and be really good at. It was really relevant. Uh, he was constantly inspired by the people he met. Discovery is like this magic box that gives a different gift to each student that's in it. And he was continually engaged by this program. Those are three words that I probably would very rarely have used in the rest of his educational career. I think any student, no matter what they're like, philosophical or pragmatic or whatever, is going to get something and feel that it's relevant. Before we went into the breakout room, we chatted a, a briefly about these four main outcomes that we strive to help our students achieve. And then I'm happy to say we do help them achieve uh, year after year, which is self-awareness, uh, confidence, communication skills, and resilience. So you might be asking yourself the question, like how, how do we do that? <laughs> how do we help our students achieve those outcomes? And so we'll kind of layer in a bunch of information here, but in terms of just kind of the practical overview of what the year for students. Um, the program runs, generally speaking, from September until June, so a typical kind of high school uh, calendar. And during that period, with the exception of February, which is the travel period, which is coming quickly upon us, as uh, some people have already mentioned, but uh, with the exception of February, the rest of the, year, of the year, the students meet for what we call discovery days. That's our uh, informal class day. That's where we do all of our learning together on Wednesdays each week. And then the rest of the week is spent doing a variety of things. It's a bit different for every student, but most of them spend most of the rest of the week working. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But we have a very intentional approach to the educational program here. We meet once per week for the full day. And then the rest of the week, the students are working, pursuing personal projects, volunteering, et cetera. So really quickly, and we'll circle back to each of these items to talk in more detail, but on that Wednesday, what we call the discovery days, that's our dynamic and student-centered uh, days of learning. And what we do there is job, life, and leadership skills. So we have very specific workshops that we help students learn skills that are really important in the adult world. Um, and these are relevant um, and purposeful for the, the age group specifically, but they're, they're really applicable to pretty much any age group. We'll talk more about those. 
There's a lot of life and career coaching. So each of the students is matched if they want to be with a personal coach, which we call a life path coach. And then we also have a ton of mentorship as well. So the students uh, twice per month, we meet with their coach to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching sessions. And then we have dozens and dozens of mentors who visit us, usually one per week at our discovery days. They do all kinds of really interesting things in the world and the students have an opportunity to ask them about their lives and to engage with them uh, to hear what it means to live a good life. So what do they do for work? What do they do for hobbies? How do they maintain good relationships? All that kind of stuff. So that's the Wednesdays. And then the rest of the time during the week and then at specific junctures in the year, the students are doing a variety of things. So number one, as we mentioned, um, our students... Most of them want to, and as part of the program, they're encouraged to work, usually for money, but sometimes students volunteer as well. It's up to the student to decide, but the overwhelming majority of our students want to make some cash, and they want to save their money or spend it as soon as it hits their, their pocket, depending on the person. But they work, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Students also travel, as I mentioned, during the month of February. So that's an exciting time, of course, for students and nerve-wracking for most parents, but uh, we all get through it together. And then there are two community service projects, one in the fall semester and then one in the winter spring semester where students get together in small groups, uh, ideate, create and deliver some type of community service project that benefits others around them. That's it in a nutshell. Now we'll talk a little bit more specifically about those Wednesdays and we'll go into breakout rooms where you can ask some questions as well. So there are 43 days this year, based on the calendar, there are 43 days between September and June. Uh, we have an immersive orientation period at the beginning of September, and then we start those uh, those every Wednesdays, the, the Wednesday meetings each week towards the end of September. They run until June. The focus here is really, as we've chatted about, it's it's learning. It's very much focused on helping the students grow and learn important things, but it is quite different than most students are used to in terms of their formal education. So we try to keep it as fun as possible in a lot of different ways. And we really focus on what are the skills and what is the knowledge that this group of people needs most immediately to have success as a young adult and then further on uh, as an adult. So as I mentioned, there's skill workshops, a lot of mentorship conversations. We do something that we call group coaching where students learn how to ask good questions to each other. They learn how to build relationships um, in a more productive and meaningful and uh, deep way. We also go out into the community and uh, do what we call experiential outings. As uh, I think it was Keisha already mentioned, next week they're going to an art gallery. We go into business places, they go to museums, uh, campuses, but we go out in the community to give the students a chance to look around and experience the world in, in a new way. Here are just a, just a flavor of some of the workshops to give you an idea of the types of things that we're doing, but a lot of the skills are uh, focused on a few different buckets. Number one, career skills, so how to uh, how to engage in the professional world, how to get a job, how to do well in your job. We focus a lot on communication skills, both in the workplace, but also interpersonally. Uh, we, we talk a lot and spend a lot of time helping the students learn how to organize their lives, how to plan things uh, a little bit better, perhaps having come from a, a world where they everything was organized for them for the last 12 or 13 years. We help them uh, build calendars and take notes and remember things a little bit better. Uh, organizational and planning skills. And then we do a lot of work around resilience and positive mental health and well-being as well. So a lot of habits and knowledge that students can use to uh, create buffers for themselves to even though there might be down periods in their lives to, uh, to have a great overall sense of well-being. Again, just doing snapshots, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions if people have them. Here's just a few samples, as I mentioned, these experiential outings. So we go to campuses. Um, and what, what our students tend to observe and share with us is that they might have done campus visits in their grade 12 year or previously, but usually this experience is quite a bit different because of the people they're doing the tour with and because of the perspective that they bring in this year where they've kind of shed the expectations around grades and performance and, you know, their high school kind of persona. So the campus tours are really useful for the students for a variety of reasons. Another thing that we that we do is the grocery store challenge to help students learn, um, number one, how much food costs and number two, how to build healthy meals on a budget and uh, to learn a little bit about, you know, how to navigate the grocery store, which many of them have not really done before. That's always a, a positive and fun experience. 
And then things like the art gallery and other types of museums where students go in and reflect upon um, their experience in that in that place and of course share about that experience with each other. But one thing we'll chat about too is that we uh, have uh, placed a great degree of emphasis on having small intimate group discussions. Uh, so it's quite different than most students experience in traditional school where you have in, you know, in high school 20 to 30 students and then in university or college somewhere from 30 to a few hundred students maybe in your class. We have uh, small groups so students learn a lot from each other. And rather than calling ourselves teachers or educators, we call ourselves facilitators because we're introducing information to the students. But mostly what we're trying to do is help them interact with that information in a positive way and to learn with and from each other. So that's something that's quite a bit different uh, in Discovery or compared to other more traditional programs. Uh, we do these things called good life conversations, and these are just five of our many, many dozens of, of mentors that the students get to interact with to give you a sense of kind of the quality or the, the experiences that these mentors bring. But uh, we record an interview uh, between myself and the mentor in advance. Students watch that before the discovery day, and then they have a Q&A period with the mentors and the students bring all their questions to find out, you know, uh, how these people ended up in the careers they they are in, you know, how did they recover, you know, from being an alcoholic? How did they uh, recover from being left at the altar? How did they choose to stop doing photography, even though they were so good at it? How did they change career paths? How did they win a Stanley Cup? Uh, so the students just get a chance to really interact with really cool, uh, down to earth, generous, successful people. And it's very inspiring for them. So uh, we'll go to a breakout uh, session in just a moment here. But one thing that we really want to emphasize, because I truly believe it's something that's very unique, both in the number and in the way that that number is used at Discovery. So this one to six ratio represents uh, two things, one to six, one day of learning, six days of exploration in every given week during the Discovery year. So one day where we come together for Discovery days, six days of exploration. And then in this context, it's one facilitator for every six students, one facilitator for six students. So if you can imagine um, in any high school or post-secondary setting, this is uh, a much smaller ratio than you'd experience. And what that enables in combination with the fact that our facilitators are am amazing humans who care deeply about the students, it really facilitates meaningful, engaging, uh, practical, relevant conversation for the students. So the environment is something that we take great pride in and, and our students consistently say, hey, I haven't been to a lot of other places where I felt so comfortable to be myself and to share important things. And that vulnerability in the group really helps the students uh, accentuate and, and learn much deeper and much quicker. And these are a few of the outcomes that come from the environment that, uh, that we help create and that the students also foster throughout the year. A Discover Year is a purposeful year of action, openness, and authenticity. But what does that actually entail? A Discover Year starts off with summer orientation, a time for you to become familiar with the program and our community. Our job search phase focuses on equipping you with the tools to find paid work that will help you develop your unique potential. Some of our participants have previous work experience, while others may be looking for their very first job. Work is a key component of a Discover Year, as it encourages experiential learning and skill application, while also allowing you to earn your own savings. At Discover Year, we recognize that everyone has different skills, interests, and expectations when it comes to employment. One day every week, Discovery Day, you will all come together for fun and engaging education. These days are dedicated to skills workshops, career conversations, and group discussion. Every Discover Year student is assigned to a personal life path coach. During your monthly individual meetings with your coach, you will gain a better understanding of how you can make use of your authentic interests, values, and talents. Your coach will aim to help you increase your confidence and self-awareness to incite meaningful action in your life. 
After several months of working, you will be encouraged to explore the world. The travel component of the program is intended to enlarge your worldview and build your confidence while stepping outside of your comfort zone. Whether you want to travel to Montreal, Versailles, or Manila during your trip, our travel experts will provide guidance and helpful suggestions as you prepare for your journey. With the Community Project, we aim to create a spark for you with regards to a particular social issue. At Discover Year, we strongly believe that community service is best when the mission and job tasks closely align with your individual interests, talents, and values. Every Discover Year is unique, and by the end, you'll have your own set of incredible experiences, opportunities, skills, and growth that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I'll pause there. And we'll go back into the breakout rooms. This time, what I'd love for our students and parents to share is, of course, parents are not there on those discovery days, but to chat a little bit about these discovery days. And for the students, what did you take away from them? What were your favorite parts? How were they useful? And of course, our guests, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask those as well. But uh, take 15 minutes and we'll see you back here. Great. And before I open those rooms, Jay, we did have a few questions pop up in the chat while you were screen sharing that I think would be, some are, are great to answer now, some could be later. Um, I suggest Nicole's first question about uh, students feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, how did Discover Your help them kind of overcome those feelings? I would suggest in this breakout, you could, you could share about that. Um, but there are a few logistical questions like, why is the travel period during February? Yes, uh, the travel period, is during February because like most of us are in Ottawa, get out of town in February. You know what I mean? Like who wants to be here in February? No, uh, that is <laughs> perhaps part of it, but mostly it's because it separates the year in two. And it's a, it's a great runway for students at the beginning of the year to learn a lot of important skills and knowledge that will be useful to them to have a, a productive trip. And then it also gives them the time to have lots of reflection and reconnection when they come back after the trip to, uh, again, apply even some of those extra lessons that they learned while they were traveling. Nice. Anything else? Thank you. Yeah, there were a few more questions such as, um, do our students find it challenging to find work that allows them the flexibility to have Wednesdays off? We get this question every time. Yeah, so really quickly on that, generally speaking, no. And, and, and mostly this concern comes from parents because uh, parents are used to a, wor a world where you kind of traditionally work either shift work or nine to five, and you're expected to be there every day, Monday to Friday. And that's not at all the nature of the jobs uh, or the schedules that our students tend to have. And we'll talk a little bit about what jobs they have. But as a rule, it's not difficult. Some students struggle to engage in that conversation. And that's a part of the skills that we're helping them learn. Um, but of course, it's not easy. It's very new to those students a lot of times. But in, in general, there are very few employers that resist giving. Sometimes their managers forget not to schedule them on Wednesday. That's something that our students say a lot. But in general, most employers are pretty enthusiastic about this, the fact that there's, the students are doing this program because they're helping them, we're helping them be a much better employee in, in most cases. So no, it's not typically difficult. And most employers ask our, our students for their schedules, for their availability when they start working. Great. And then there are a few other questions which we will answer later on regarding location and where our discovery days take place, where students need to be. So we will get to that later in the prez. Um, and yeah, as I said earlier, I think taking a moment in our breakout room that we're about to open to answer Nicole's question about feeling burnt out and how Discovery contributed to that, I think that'd be great. Oh, yeah. I'm very curious to hear what the students uh, have to say on that and the parents too. So enjoy and we'll see you back here in 15. Discovery is like... There's so much possibility during the day and it's refreshing switch from the high school system. I'm just so much more inviting different thoughts than I was before. Like just the ability to learn new things that you weren't expecting, I think is incredible. In high school, I'm like, okay, well, 
I like working with my hands, so that means I should be a tradesperson, right? But like I asked a bunch of friends and close facilitators what jobs they think I'd be good at. And then now I have this gigantic list of jobs I didn't even know existed till today. One thing that's really special about Discoverer is how individualized it is. In high school, if you just choose courses you're more interested in, then there you go, individualized. But I think Discover Year takes it way further because not only do you get to learn about topics that you're interested in, it's like you get to be the one asking the questions and doing the self-reflection. You get to decide what you're going to get out of it and you can get that out of it. It's more open to the individuals and what they value and the different mindsets and perspectives are welcomed in Discover Year like, so that we can realize that it's okay to think differently and in fact it's valuable to think differently. The first thing that actually came to mind is the fact that at Discover Year we learn skills that are actually important to life. In high school I feel like we learn a lot of things and at the time, it just doesn't seem that they're important. And in Discovery Year, we know why they are relevant, which gives me motivation to learn those things. And we actually have time to practice those skills with the group, communication skills, to understand what resilience means, uh, how to bounce back from uh, failures, and, and just how to look at life differently. Yeah, there's just a lot of misconceptions on life that were clarified with talking with people and you're able to just build and change your mindset for a more effective one and you can actually live more effectively, which is something that I didn't get in high school at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome back everybody. And uh, hopefully that was a fruitful conversation. Thanks for jumping into it. So we'll carry along now. Um, of course, there, if there are any other questions, feel free to add those in the chat or raise, raise your hand. Well, we've chatted uh, just recently, we chatted a, a broad overview of the year, and then we dove in a little bit more to, you know, the, the beginning of like what we do on those discovery days. And now I'd love to share a little bit more detail about what happens outside of those discovery days. So the first element that our students engage in that they're expected to do during the year is some form of work. And as I mentioned, students uh, can volunteer and sometimes do. Uh, that's a personal decision for them to make, but we expect the students to at least endeavor to find a job. And um, in today's world, students who are able, sometimes they lack the confidence uh, or the um, ability to kind of really get after a job search because they've never done it before at the beginning of the year. But uh, we coach and guide students to do that. Some students get jobs right away. Some students already had jobs. Um, and we can field any questions that people have about those if you'd like as well. But this here is a sampling, very recent sampling. In fact, these are these are uh, job samples from our current students. Uh, we just pulled them the other day to uh, find out exactly where they're all working right now. So as you can see, our students mostly work kind of entry level retail service type jobs because that's what they're qualified to do. So this is not a program where we are tr striving to get students internships at the most prestigious law firms or trying to get them on the on the highway to uh, Wall Street. We're really helping them become excellent employees wherever they go and those skills, uh, the transferable skills as they're often referred to, where that's what we're focusing on. So students tend to make you know uh, minimum wage, maybe a little bit more than minimum wage. Um, in Ontario that, you know, that's 1650, I guess, which I learned recently, I thought it was still $15. So sweet 15, uh, 1650 for the students, uh, but they do entry level jobs. Sometimes people ask us, Hey, I already have a job. Can I keep it? Sometimes people ask, you know, um, do I have to get a new job after I come back from the travel? So there, the answer to all of those things is maybe. <laughs> um, so the way the program is structured, we, uh, it's a coaching based program. So we don't dictate we don't feel it's our responsibility to tell a student exactly how many hours they should work or exactly what job they should have. We work with them to help them think about what's appropriate and meaningful to them. So if you have a job already, our question to the student is, are you going to keep learning at that job? Is there an opportunity for growth? Do you enjoy it? Is it a good environment? We help them kind of analyze it. And if the answer is yes to all those questions, great, keep going. And we'd help, we'd work with them a little bit to help them understand how they can maybe try to achieve more, to be more proactive at work, that kind of thing. If they say, no, this is a bad job, I hate it, I'm not learning anything, there's no room for growth, we would encourage them and guide them to find another job. Um, some students get fired. 
some students quit inevitably, just like life. Uh, we are living in the world. And so these things happen from time to time. But as uh, some of our students have alluded to, Discover Your Each Week is a place where they can come and share about those things, learn, grow from them, and go back. Um, and some students do get a different job when they come back after February. Some students go back to the same job. Um, people are often surprised at how willing many of the employers are to give the student the month of February off uh, and welcome them back afterward. Um, it's a testament usually to the fact that the student's doing a good job as well as the current job market. It's been challenging for people to find uh, students. So it's, 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 it's a good situation for our students in most cases. So that's a little bit about the work terms. Again, if you have other questions, happy to field them. And uh, my my new jealous month for the last eight years, February is my month of jealousy where the students go off and do all this really cool stuff. Sometimes they go an hour away. Sometimes they go 5,000, 6,000 kilometers away. So this is just a handful of examples of students over the over the last number of years. Um, but the, the period for travel is February. But there's, like most things in our program, there's a lot of flexibility because our goal is to help students identify what's purposeful and meaningful and interesting to them and to uh, to work hard to make that happen. So some of our students, as some of you might be thinking, are not ready for a month-long trip to Tibet or they're not ready for a month-long walk on the Camino Trail in Spain or Italy. They're ready for a weekend alone away, and that's fine. And that's what we work with the students to help them understand what's appropriate to push them just outside of their comfort zone, but not so far out that it's um, it's misery for them. So um, there's a huge range of possibilities, and that's really important to emphasize. We don't expect that they go alone. We don't expect that they go with others in discovery year. Uh, some combination of all those things tends to happen. They have to have an explicit plan. They have to be intentional about something they want to learn. They have to do a trip that they are excited about, and they cannot go for the entire duration with an immediate family member. In fact, we we say parent or guardian, because if they want to go with a brother or sister or, or cousin or something like that, that's usually okay. But um, we don't want this to be a family trip is the idea. It's a trip where the student can learn and grow and plan things on their own and, uh, you know, bounce back on their own, that kind of thing. It's always a very exciting time of year. Um, this year, Jules and uh, Emily could tell you a little bit more about some of the plans of the students, but I know there's a group going to Japan. I know there's one student going to Korea. There are others that are going much closer to home. Uh, some students go domestically. Jules, M, real quick, any other any other places uh, that, that you know of that students have confirmed where they're traveling? Yeah, yeah, one student is doing Germany meeting up with a friend he's never met in real life but it's a gaming friend who they're like best friends and have been best friends since like um intermediate school and uh, that's where he's staying for the month of february and they're, they'll do little backpacking weekends and stuff together and then on the other end of the spectrum another student who had no idea what to do is like really really his goal this year is confidence and stepping outside of his comfort zone um, is going to spend a weekend in Montreal and booked an Airbnb. And that to him is a huge step because he's never traveled without his family before. He's never spent a night without his family before um, because he's never he's never needed to, right? So for him, a weekend in Montreal is going to be a big move. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Em, anything else? Move on. Yeah, I can add a few. I know one student is going to New Zealand for a couple of weeks. Um, she wants to go explore the Shire. She's a big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, another student is going with a friend to New York City. So, you know, out of country, still a little bit closer, um, but trying to navigate not only he, this student in particular is flying from Toronto. So he's trying to figure out not only which Toronto airport to fly out of, but which of the three New York City airports to fly into. So he didn't realize that there are several different airports in that city. So that's a, an interesting conversation to navigate that. Um, another student is going to Quebec City with her sister, um, and she is planning everything, and her sister gets tagged on, so pretty uh, sweet deal for her. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so again, a pretty, uh, pretty broad sampling for students, uh, lots of different things, all very exciting, and when the students come home, generally, in my experience, there are three common experiences or, or reflections that students have. They usually say, oh my goodness, I, I appreciate so much more where I come from and what I have, regardless of where they go. 
Um, number two, they'll say, you know what? People in the world are really nice, actually. I was needed help here or there. People just offered me help and I didn't even, they could see I needed help and they just offered it. So people are, students are often surprised at how, how nice the vast majority of people in the world are. And number three, they say, you know what? Stuff happened. It wasn't what I expected. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted, but I worked through it and I learned a lot from that. So those are the three most common things that we hear in, in general terms. So it's a very exciting time around Discovery Year. So I mentioned earlier, there are two community service projects as well. We do one in the fall, one in the uh, winter and spring when the students return from their, from their travel period in February. And this is uh, all about helping the students Number one, identify something that could be of use in their community. And uh, number two, building the skills to deliver a project, which is not, uh, it's not about volunteering at all. In fact, it's not about signing up to help somebody else. It's about the whole uh, idea of thinking, what does the world around me need? What do I have that can contribute to that? How can I get organized with other people to deliver on that? How do we need to communicate? How can we organize our meetings? It doesn't go well. Um, they learn about how to plan things effectively. So there's tons of tons, tons of failure in all of this because the students are learning what it means to be outside of a very rigid set schedule that they were used to in school. And they're learning how to have feedback conversations and learning how to take the lead or not take the lead. So that's what they do. They do these really cool projects. You can see a few examples here. And um, mostly what we're aiming for them to do is number one, learn how good it feels to rather than spend your time watching Netflix, go out into the community and give something back that you care about. And number two, these really important teamwork and communication skills that will serve them wherever they go after. This February, Discover Your students traveled across the globe, reaching all six of Earth's inhabited continents. Grace Lemon traveled to Bhutan and Thailand in Asia. Bhutan was her absolute favorite experience, where she learned about Buddhism, helping her to have a more positive and peaceful mindset. Grace King traveled with Maddie to Hawaii, where they experienced a variety of incredible adventures. One of the biggest takeaways that Grace has come home with is that she will never allow herself to feel stuck in a place ever again. Grace saw herself grow in ways she could have never imagined, and she will continuously search for more experiences like that for the rest of her life. Off in a new place all on his own, Reese traveled to Australia. Australia taught me a lot of things. How to make good avocado toast, how to grocery shop properly. But the most important thing I learned is how to just relax. Before Australia, I would get so nervous for the slightest things and I would freak out over nothing. And until then, I just didn't know how to take a deep breath enjoy the moment that I'm in. Brooklyn Bridge. Here we come. <laughs> Our travels taught us some incredibly valuable lessons. From independence, to resilience, to confidence, to perspective. Now that we've had these opportunities to explore, the possibilities are endless. Whether they'll take us near or far, all of us are so excited for our next adventure. Okay, a little bit about 
logistics for the year. So to give people kind of an overview of the a visual of what the year looks like. So we'll chat about admissions and the timelines with respect to admissions shortly, but the program gets underway late June. We tend to have a welcome session for the students and parents if they'd like to join to really help people understand and kind of crystallize the details of the program to set expectations, to help students understand what they can expect from us in terms of uh, the facilitation of the program and what we expect from them in terms of their behavior and uh, engagement and communication. So we do that end of June and then uh, we have the orientation period that begins in earnest at the beginning of September. So that's an immersive period where we have uh, part of a week online, but we also have a full week in Ottawa. So students that are not from Ottawa join us here. And uh, we have a very immersive week with everyone together, regardless of where they're from, to bond and to build relationships and to set the tone for the year. And then the students uh, either stay in Ottawa or go back to where they're from. And we carry on with the rest of the program starting in uh, late September with those regular Wednesday discovery days, travel period in February, and then March till June, we have that same pattern as the first semester where we meet every Wednesday, students are working and exploring other things uh, the rest of the week. And then we wrap up with our graduation at the beginning of July. So it's uh, the timeline is, a, is kind of one calendar year, but the, um, the bulk of the programming is happening between uh, September and June. In terms of admissions, our first round uh, admissions deadline is coming up in exactly one month on February 11th. So um, it, we always encourage students who know they want to apply to do so by February 11th because there's no guarantee that there will be space available after that date. Um, traditionally, there has been, but if you know you want to apply, it's always best to, uh, in my opinion, apply soon. And then uh, there is an application form. We do ask students for two references that we can follow up um, if we'd like to. And then each student is asked to submit a personal statement, 800 to 1,000 words written statement, or students who prefer are welcome to send a video. Uh, and the purpose of that statement is just to tell us a little bit about them and to explain why they want to do the program and how they will contribute to the program and the other members. And then we have a short interview with students as well uh, following their application just to do our best to make sure that the student is a good fit for the program and that we're a good fit for them. Okay, so where does the program happen? We have three what we call hubs. So Ottawa, which is the original location. We've been here since 2016. Um, and Jules is the program manager here in Ottawa. Emily, as she mentioned, is the program manager in the Toronto hub. This is our first year uh, with an active group in Toronto where they meet every week. We've had students from the Toronto area and elsewhere uh, each year until now uh, for the last five or six years, but now we actually have uh, a hub in Toronto. So we have a group of students that meet there every week. And then we also have a remote program uh, where we have students this year, a couple from a distance outside of the greater Toronto area, pretty far, too far for them to go in every uh, Wednesday, a student in Saskatchewan. And then until he moved here recently, Emilio was in Mexico doing the remote program. And now he's here in, in, um, in Ottawa. So students who are a little bit outside of the hubs have the option to do the remote program, um, as well as, you know, if they just prefer to do it that way. And like I mentioned, we uh, invite all the students to come to Ottawa for the orientation period. And that always proves to be uh, a really important time of the year where the students get to know each other, um, have a lot of bonding experiences, and we set the tone for the year. So like, like uh, pretty much everybody over the course of the pandemic, we had to experiment um, and we had to do online. Fortunately for us, we already had a group of students previous to COVID. Uh, in fact, Ariel was one of those students uh, who was already doing this hybrid model with us where she was learning remotely, uh, engaging uh, sometimes with the group in Ottawa. But over the pandemic, we had to go entirely virtual for one and a half years. And now we have landed on this model, which I really like and I think works really, really well for our students, which is uh, two thirds of the time in person for the students in Ottawa and Toronto. So that's generally the afternoons on those Wednesdays, plus that orientation, uh, which happens entirely in person for that week in Ottawa. And then a third of the program is online. So the mornings uh, we do online for a couple of hours. And the reason that we do that is number one, it gives us access to mentors who are dispersed, really amazing people who can join us 
who we would not be able to fly in to Ottawa or Toronto. And number two, it helps all the students, regardless of their location, connect with each other each week, which is an important part for, for those people. So um, there's a lot of benefits to doing it online. And we have certainly heard some resistance and um, kind of lack of desire for people to do online learning, which I totally understand coming out of COVID. And at the same time, I always invite people to come to one of our online sessions to experience it. Um, and that's something that students, prospective students are welcome to do to a discovery day because it is quite different than the learning that most people have experienced online. Like I said, small group discussion, it's um, less formal, less structured in a way than a lot of the uh, learning that people would have done in COVID online. So it's uh, quite, quite different, but that's the way we do it. This year was our first year with this exact model and it's going really well from our perspective and uh, all the feedback that we re received from the student's perspective as well. Okay, a little bit about the fees and how this works. So when we set out to uh, build Discovery Year, it was really important to me that students be able to hopefully fund this program on their own and to uh, integrate into the program a little bit of an opportunity for students to learn about money. So um, we are, as I mentioned earlier, we'll talk a little bit more about this. We're a, a registered educational institution in Canada. We're considered a private career college. So Discovery Year is uh, a formal education program within the, the Canadian government's uh, standing. So this is how it's broken down. So we expect students, <laughs> uh, we hope that students are able to make enough money to pay for the program. Uh, if they can save, and they don't always do that well, as you can imagine. But essentially, the students at sixteen fifty an hour, working an average of thirty hours a week for forty weeks. Some work more than that, but if you work forty weeks, that's close to twenty thousand dollars that you'd earn in terms of uh, revenue. And uh, the program this coming year is ninety four hundred, and um, the travel fees. Is, this is an average. Students have a huge range of expenses from you know a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars all the way up to sometimes ten thousand or more, depending on what they choose to do. But I would say an average is between three and four thousand. So in in principle, even though students might be paying for the program themselves, they should have uh, a net benefit of about sixty nine hundred dollars. Uh, if they're not paying for uh, housing and food, which sometimes they are, uh, but a lot of our students are living at home. For most of the year. So we also have bursaries for students in uh, low in lower income thresholds. Uh, you are not eligible for OSAP in Discover year, but you can, as I mentioned, use uh, RESPs. So the entire tuition for the program is RESP eligible. That means it's also tuition tax credit eligible, which my accountant tells me uh, generally reduces uh, the cost of the program with about a $1,200 tax credit. Don't quote me on that. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, it's a it's a good chunk that uh, families tend to get back. And as I mentioned, there are bursaries based on a schedule um, that is on the on the website for people that are in a lower uh, lower income bracket. Okay, um, I want to respect everyone's time. It's eight fifty nine, so we're we're uh, scheduled to wrap up in one minute. And um, just in in a way, uh, in order to do that, I would love to hear. I don't think we'll have time from uh, for everybody, but a few words from a couple of students, maybe uh, your words of encouragement or um, any thoughts, just one sentence or less for our guests as they they leave the session tonight. This is my go to every time, but you'll you'll get out of it what you put into it. It's an amazing year, but you'll definitely get out of it what you put into it. Yes, yeah, so I'm only halfway through the program right now. But I, I can already feel, I can't tell you distinctly what has changed, but I can already feel more maturity and I definitely feel growth and I've, I've developed new perspectives and I, I already can't wait to, you know, see where I'm at by the end of the year Very cool. and my colleagues because I already see the growth there too and it's really nice to witness a quick word on the community of discover year um before this session tonight i was exhausted i had a very long day um and i wasn't sure how my energy was going to be and then as soon as i saw everyone and got the opportunity to talk about my experiences and thinking back of to the community and, and kind of being engaged in this like a little mini session right now um it's it's lifted me up and, and i'm wide awake now and i'm really happy um, to be sharing with everyone. And I hope 
maybe uh, some of you, hopefully maybe all of you, um, have found value in this session and, and hope to see the future in the program or around. And for our guests, thank you for joining. Hopefully it was useful to you. We appreciate you spending a couple of valuable hours with us. So take good care. Happy New Year. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. All right. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to say it from the heart, you know, right here. So yeah, here we go. As I entered Discovery Year, it was refreshing to hear how normal it was to simply not know. At the very beginning of grade 12, I was really struggling. I had no idea what I wanted. I had no idea who I was. It seemed everyone else knew with confidence what I should do and who I should be except for myself. Looking back at who I was a year ago, I didn't want to take risks because where there was risk, there was possibility for failure. I was just scared of being scared. That fear and the desire to overcome it is one of the things that prompted my gap year in the first place. When I joined this program, I went in with open arms, but with zero expectation. At Discovery Year, we come from different backgrounds. We have completely different strengths and ways of seeing life. Discovery Year accepts us with gratitude and challenges us with empathy. It brings belonging back to the world. I made leaps and bounds in self-improvement this year before I even noticed. If I didn't take Discovery Year, I feel like I wouldn't be as adventurous as I am now. This impacted my work decisions as I took on three completely different jobs. I saw this openness during our travel period in Hawaii. From learning the true meaning of curiosity to exploring my own home province to traveling to Argentina in a place that I have no idea what the language is. I've learned to take risks and be okay with the fact that plans change and things may not always work out the way I expect them to. I gained so much perspective and insight from the mentors, pushing myself to ask deeper questions every week. I learned to appreciate where I was, what was around me. I have learned probably at least 10 years of life skill that I would have had to go through so much on my own to be able to learn. It was through this program that I discovered that failure doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, that it can actually be a very good thing, because with each failure comes growth and opportunity. This year has been uncertain for sure, with COVID, and the plane to Switzerland, and all that. But in our uncertainty, we find hope. Hope that the next day will be better, and hope that we will be better. Because by changing my mindset, perfection doesn't need to be my goal. My goal can simply be to explore. Although I'm still confused on what the future holds for me, unlike last year, I'm very comfortable with that because I know with the tools I have, I'm gonna succeed in anything I choose. So, to finish off. I'd like to thank everybody that I've talked to during micro-coaching or roundtables. Jay, Jules, and every staff and student member of Discovery Year. Thank you, friends, family, and mentors. For just making this the best year of my life so far. I wouldn't have had that if I wasn't learning and growing alongside you guys. So for that, I am eternally grateful. You guys have made a huge difference in my life. And that means the world. Thank you to everyone that made this happen. This is not the end. Thank you.